Welcome to the Property Renovation Podcast with your host, James Woodham, giving you the best tips on achieving the perfect renovation whilst making it as fun, safe, and as cost-effective as possible by hearing from experts in the industry and people that have been through the experience themselves. Let me introduce your host, three times award winner of leading renovation website, House, and over 15 years in the industry, renovating just over 200 properties, James Woodham. Okay, so the things to consider for a kitchen renovation is um, how accessible are you gonna be to make on the spot decisions? You could be at work, you could be in a meeting. So um, the tradesmen on site if you've not fully uh, given them access to just do what they want, um, they're going to be asking you questions. They're going to be wanting to give you a call, sending you an email, and you need to be available um, to to answer that um, within a reasonable amount of time to keep the project flowing at a reasonable speed and um, and answer those questions. So just have a think about when you're going to be accessible um, so that you can let them know. Um, then you need to consider about how many tradesmen are going to be on site at any one time. Uh, this will be different um, and more be more difficult to handle if you've got a really small galley kitchen as to compared to maybe a, um, a 20 square meter kitchen. Um, so you need to be thinking about uh, how many people can fit in a, a, at one time. Um, another thing to consider before you start any of the works is the layout of your kitchen. Is it functionally going to work for you? Um, uh, is there space that you can move around and like, you know, consider opening the doors and stuff like that? A good way to do this is um, just to map it out with some masking tape on the floor, just so that you can get a feel of like how um, much of the space is going to be impacted uh, within your kitchen layout. And then you just got to think about the accessibility of everything. Access into the kitchen. If you're thinking about having a kitchen island, what's the access to get into that, around that? Um and if you've got a back door to your garden, then you need to be thinking about the access to that as well. Um, <clears throat> you need to be thinking about lead times for suppliers. Um, it can be really difficult sometimes to get um, all your kitchen in one go. Um, there are certainly uh, a few companies out there, especially the trade kitchen companies, um, that don't always deliver uh, your kitchen in one delivery, and they will um, look to be getting uh, other parts of your kitchen from another depot. So you need to be thinking about are the most important parts arriving at um, the time when they're needed. Um, and then worktops. So there are different worktops, obviously. You've got laminate worktops, glass worktops, wooden worktops, um, and stone worktops. So a few of those are gonna be needing to have someone visit, template, um, do a template first of the kitchen, um, and obviously the units have to be in for that and then they'll go away, they'll cut it and then they'll deliver it and then fit it. So um, there'll be two visits involved in, in, in some of those as well. Um, stock levels for tiles. If you're thinking about having some tiles, um, just make sure that they are in stock and they are all the rain, same batch, same colour, um, same size and everything. So you need to be just thinking about that. Um, access times for work. Uh, your neighbours might not want people working on a Saturday. Um, they might not want people working until nine o'clock instead of eight o'clock. So you need to be um, thinking about the times that are available. Maybe they can't work, the tradesmen can't work um, after five o'clock uh, and they have to finish at four. So you need to be thinking about that as well because that's going to have an impact on the amount of days that people will be able to, to, to work on your project. Um, you need to be thinking about like, does your existing kitchen have any damp issues? Has it got any leaks? Those kind of things because you need to think about drying times. Once you've ripped out your kitchen, you're going to need to ventilate your kitchen and, and, and get all the walls dry and the floor dry um, or replace them. Um, and you can do that by getting a dehumidifier, um, increased the ventilation. Maybe you've got no windows, so you need to be thinking about it's going to take longer than usual. Um, and then talking about ventilation, you need to be thinking about how do you want your kitchen ventilated? Do you, when you put your extractor in, do you want that recirculating the air within the room or are you going to want that ducting out uh, to the outside? So, um, And if you've not got that already, you're going to need a big hole to go through your wall. Um, you need to think, think about how long that's going to take. Um, 
and uh, it's you know it does take some time. It takes maybe up to an hour sometimes. So you need to be thinking about that as well. Maybe you've got um, some infestations, some rat problems, um, some some other pest problems that you you need to think about, and like how you're going to treat them. Are you going to call in a um, um, a pest company, and they're going to be taking some time, and nothing can be done <clears throat> before. Um, before that's treated maybe they're going to be using some uh some really severe chemicals and uh your family has to move out for it for a day or two or something like that so you need to be thinking about that um then uh listing the units online um prior to the removal and the arrangement of collection and for on the first deliver on the first day uh, so basically what that means is that um, you can speed up a lot of time so that your you, when your appliances are removed out from your kitchen, they're not just stuck in your house, um, you know, clogging up space. So you might as well just list them online, maybe um, eBay or Gumtree or something like that, um, and just tell them you're having a kitchen replaced. You no longer need these appliances, and um, you you know you would like these gone on the day of the delivery, and then that way. You can get some money for your old appliances, and they can be gone out of your way, and they're not not in the way of the tradesman either. So let's talk about the removal of your kitchen. Um, you can do this yourself as well um, if you if you want to save some money, and that will be in a future episode. So just listen out for that. Um, but you need to be thinking about first the gas, electric, and water will need to be switched off um, on the first day. So that means that you're not going to be able to use any of that. Um, and you need to provide access for that. Usually the gas uh, mains is on the outside of the house, so that's not too too much of a problem. But the things like your electric and your water, they'll probably be in a cupboard, maybe underneath the stairs and something like that. Um, so if you've got loads and loads of clothes and boxes and shoes and everything else in there, um, save some time and remove all of that before the builders arrive on site. Um, then you need to be thinking about emptying your uh, kitchen units already so that they, they can be taken off. And you can do that the night before. That doesn't take too long, but it will speed up a lot of time uh, so the tradesmen don't have to think about doing it themselves. And usually tradesmen do ask that anyway. So take everything out um, so that all the units are, um, are empty. Clear all of the worktops and speed up some time as well. Take off the doors, remove the drawers. Those are the simple things that you can do yourself, um, which will speed up a lot of time as well. Um, and then just make some space. Make some space for the new units because when they arrive, they do take up a lot of space. Um, and, you, you know, preferably you don't want them in the same room that the kitchen is going to be installed. Um, if you've got a big enough kitchen, you can put that on one side. But you, you put, put that in the room next to the kitchen so that they can be easily accessed and they're not just taking up too much space. Um, the next thing before any of the kitchen goes in are the first fix of the electrics and plumbing that you need to consider. Are you going to be re relocating all your wiring in your kitchen? You're going to be adding or taking away the lighting. You're going to be changing the position of the lighting, changing the position of the sockets. All of these things do take up time. Um, so you need to be thinking about that well beforehand. Um, and uh, just a good communication about that is that you can mar mark it on the wall of where, where things are going to go so that then um, you're reducing the amount of time by you know less questions being asked by the tradesman. Um, know in advance what kind of lighting that you want will speed up the process as well. So are you going to have down lights versus a pendant light? Um, are you going to be having some independent mood lighting? Uh, are you going to have some under lighting underneath your wall units? Are you going to be having some lighting on the plinths as well? Because that's that's an option as well. So you need to be just thinking about that. Um, with the sockets, um, are you going to be thinking about whether these are surface mounted, whether they are going to be in the wall? And if they're not in the wall already, then they're going to need to be channeled out. And if you've got a solid wall, that does take some time as well. It takes round about 30 minutes um, to, to channel out a socket um, hole. Um, then about the pipework, again, uh, maybe you've removed your kitchen, you've got all your pipework surface mounted, it looks ugly, you might not like it that way, and you want to have these all buried in the wall. Um, that, again, is going to take some time, so you just need to be thinking about that. Um, for surface mounted um, pipework to be put in anyway takes around a day to have that done. If you're thinking about having them buried in the wall, just add on another two days to that. So two to three days for doing all the pipework. The underfloor heating, um, 
Uh, if you're thinking about an electric system, that's about a day. If you're thinking about a water-based system, it takes a little bit longer than that. Um, so you, uh, you, you also need to be considering the distance from the source. So maybe your um, because the underfloor heating will be electric, then that will need to be directly connected to your consumer unit fuse board, and that might be at the other end of the house. So it would need to be completely chased through. Um, then you need to consider, are you going to be having any new substrates for your walls and your floors? Um, doing a new floor um, made out of ply is going to take two days, um, roughly. Uh, if you're thinking about dropping your ceiling and having some spotlights in there, that will take a couple of days as well. Um, and then let's talk about the plastering. So if you're thinking about um, having your, your, your place needs plastering, then you think about the skimming. The skimming is just a thin layer of plaster, uh, two to three mil thick, and that will take about two days to dry. It will take a full day to do a reasonably sized kitchen, and then it will take two days to dry. If you need to have bonding on uh, the wall, then you need to be thinking about another day for that to dry as well. Um, Typically, dry walls take, like plasterboard walls, to have some plaster put on that, um, takes about two to three dry, two to, two to three days to dry fully. Um, and any solid walls that are having some plaster put on there, um, it, it takes about a week. If you're having it done in the summer, it can speed up a little bit, but it usually takes about a week to dry. Um, painting. I would probably suggest that you would paint your kitchen first before any of the kitchen goes in it's going to be a lot quicker you're not going to have to mask everything up you're not going to have a risk of damage to your units so you need to be thinking about painting your kitchen first take about two days to do and then you can just touch up um, after when it's all once all the kitchen is in you can touch up the painting uh, which will take about a day so that's that's the fastest way to do it if you do it the other way around it's going to take a lot longer you're going to have to think about masking everything up that's going to take a few hours you're going to have to be more delicate um getting up um you know you're going to be it's going to be more difficult to get those ladders in place and everything else because the units are in the way so you just need to be thinking about um doing the painting first okay so fitting the units um, a flat pack kitchen, sometimes that can arrive, um, it will take an additional one or two days to build up all of those and assemble all of the units and, um, to, before they put in place. Um, a pre-built kitchen, which some of the um, trades um, kitchen companies offer, um, will uh, take about five days on average for, for an average kitchen to be fitted. Um, and obviously um, that's sped up by the fact that they're not flat pack. They, they don't have to be pre-assembled. Um, and then um, thinking about like adding handles. There's a lot of kitchens these days where they're the option for having integrated handles where they're already made um, within the within the door panel themselves. Um, but if you have to have to add, add handles, um, then you just need to look about adding another half a day on doing that as well, making sure that the pilot holes are drilled properly and they're in the right place. So it takes about half a day to do that. Um, lining up and adjusting, that will be done at the end. It takes about two to three hours to do. Um, if you've got pelmet and cornicing, um, pelmets and cornicings take about a day to do. Uh, these are the things that are below your wall units and above your wall units. Um, and then the plinth, to, to finish off the kitchen takes about two hours. So um, fitting the appliances, if you've got like standard appliances um, that you can just pick off the shelf and you know they're, they're a couple of hundred pounds, then it will just take a day to do. But you might have some more advanced uh, appliances that are, you know, there's hidden screws and there's they're, they're, they're just more advanced and more luxury. Um, I would just add an extra day because they'll, they'll, the, the tradesmen will have to be extra careful. They'll have to probably, it's a bit more technical to fit. So they just need a bit more time to do that. Um, let's talk about the worktops. So like I said, laminate worktops, they take about a day to fit. They're really easy. You can get them off the shelf, uh, cut them on site, and then they can be fitted. Um, then you've got some lower lower value timber worktops, um, which again, you can get off the shelf. They take about a day to fit. But you've got some more high value timber worktops like walnut, um, and they have to go through that template process more or less because no one uh, they, they would very rarely be getting cut on site um 
they're just too expensive uh, to make a mistake. So um, usually the, the templating when they arrive takes about an hour to do. Um, and then there's a one to two week lead time depending on uh, your supplier um, for cutting. And then they'll come with the, the worktops to fit them and then finish them all off and oil them. That takes about a day to do. So um, then you've got the stone worktops. Again, your, your marble, your granite. Um, those are the kind of um, worktops that take that templating process. Again, another week, one to two week lead time and a day for fitting. So just make, make sure you, you're aware of that. Glass worktops, like, likewise, template one hour, one to two week lead time um, and then a day for fitting. Um, let's just talk, talk about the tiling. So um, if you've got like just ceramic tiles, something that you can get off the shelf in Wix, B&Q, that kind of thing, um, they can be fitted uh, within a day, pretty much. Um, and uh, if you've got mosaics, that's going to take a lot longer, maybe five days, uh, because you've got to be a lot more careful, depending on um, how many square meters, obviously, but there's just a lot more care and attention that needs to go in them. The grouting of them takes a lot longer as well. Um, if you've got a large format tile, that is going to take less time to do. Um, so you just need to be thinking roughly for tile in your kitchen, it takes um, two to three days maximum to finish everything off. Um, and if you've got mosaics, uh, then it's just going to take uh, a couple more days. So then you've got the snagging process. So this is when everything is done within your kitchen. Um, and you go around, preferably with your tradesman, just have a look around everything, try, uh, try and test everything, pull out the drawers, open up the, door un uh, the doors and stuff like that, make sure all the hinges are intact, make sure there's no damage, no chips, um, and no marks and scratches on the worktop, those kind of things. And also have a look at the things that you need adjusted, things that have not been fitted quite right. Um, so that's just going to take a couple of, you know, maybe an hour or two to just go through um, and start um, compiling a list together with your tradesman. Um, but you can speed up that process, obviously, because you can keep an eye on the project. You can check it before you go to work. Come home and check it as well and just start writing that list already um, and then leave it on the side so that then every day your tradesmen come in and they, they can say, oh, okay, they've noticed that. We didn't pick that up. We can get that done right now. So there's less of a snagging list at the end. Um, then you've got a professional clean. This is before the silicon application. It's best to just get all of that dust out of the way, clear everything out of the way so that you've got nice clean services. A professional clean for a kitchen refurbishment will probably take about four hours, two people. So um, that's just to make, to make sure that everything is, is spotless. Um, and then you would book in a silicon guy. You can get your, um, your plumber or your tradesman to do it, but they're not probably not specialists. They probably have been doing it for many years. So just check to see if they can do it well. Um, but it is the finished article. It is, um, you know, it's really easy to mess silicon up um, and it's really difficult to get it right. So it takes about one to two hours. There are professionals out there that do it. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis um, and it's a very good investment because you, then you know it's done right, you've got nice clean lines and your kitchen can be finished perfectly. So I hope you've enjoyed that episode. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one. Just before you go, we wanted to let you know that the Akiva Toolkit has now launched. What's that, you might say? Well, it's 10 documents that you can go and download for a very small fee and then it will enable you to bring your project in on time and on budget. We've put these together to make sure it's as simple as it can be. And in return, you will feel supercharged, super confident in managing your project, your self-build, your renovation, anything yourself. They've all been put together by people that have been in the industry for many, many years. And as soon as you download it, you're then in the basket for any updates, any new documents that are issued throughout the time. We will be reviewing it over time and time to get it better and better and better. We would only be able to do that by hearing from yourself. So please leave us any feedback. If you think it's for you or you think this could benefit someone else, that you might know, then please share it. You can go to akivatoolkit.com to find out more information. Thank you very much.